My mum recently asked if I could help her find out if she was overpaying for her electricity and gas bill. It had been quite some time since I did this audit myself to see what competition and offers are available out there from different suppliers. And this was a good reminder to take some time out of my day to do this important check. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to go about finding the best electricity and gas deals or suppliers based on your own specific living situation. Right off the bat, it is important to understand that everyone's usage of these two utilities in particular will differ pretty significantly depending on a few different factors. Understanding how to find the right deal for you will be the key to reducing unnecessary spending. As an example, within my parents' home, the oven, the stove, the gas heater, and the hot water system all run off natural gas. Whereas in my investment property, it's only the hot water system that uses this utility. So for my parents' situation, it makes sense for them to hunt around for a deal where gas charges are relatively low and competitive. Whereas for my investment property, it's not really important other than the fact of having a low supply charge because the usage of gas would be relatively low and not be a massive impacting factor on their annual or quarterly bills. This might see me finding a really good deal for electricity, even if the gas charges from that same supplier were really high, because it wouldn't really matter that much in this scenario. So that could see me saving a lot of money, even if their gas charges were high. The difference in your usage of each utility will play an important role in deciding which supplier to go with. One thing worth noting is that lots of people generally bundle electricity and gas together with the same company. You'll need to check online on the various websites of the suppliers you're going to look at, which we'll talk about a bit later in today's video, you need to check the websites to make sure that they are able to supply to your location if that's something that you're interested in doing. And the only other thing I quickly wanna mention before we get into it is that there are a lot of comparison websites out there which do a lot of the grunt work I'm about to show you. My gripe with these websites is that they have the option to promote whatever they want to the highest bidder should they choose to. This means that you might be recommended a product that isn't necessarily right for you, ending up with you spending more money on a service that you shouldn't be spending that extra money on. My suggestion is to do the checks that I'm about to show you yourself and then use these comparison websites as a sanity check. And no matter where you live in the world, what I'm about to go through will be relevant to most people. It will be a scenario that can definitely be applicable anywhere. Just understand that I've linked two very specific comparison websites in the description down below, just as an example of how to go about doing that sanity check once you go through what I'm about to take you through. So when looking into this yourself, where should you start? Step one is to understand your usage. And I'm going to use the numbers I pulled from my previous parents' bills to show a real world example of how to apply this to your own situation. Looking here at my cleaned up spreadsheet, I have input the details of my parents' electricity and gas usage based on a quarterly billing cycle. They're roughly using 727 kilowatt hours of electricity per quarter, which works out to be about eight kilowatt hours per day. For gas, my parents are using 3,780 megajoules per quarter, which works out to be roughly 42 megajoules per day. And you should be able to pull this data from the online profile of your current energy supplier or from your actual bills, which will also be supplied by them. The next thing that you want to understand is what you're being charged for and how much because bills these days have gotten a lot more complex. In Australia in particular, you can now be charged more or less depending on the time of day that you're using your appliances and devices. For electricity, you'll want to jot down your daily supply charge, your shoulder usage costs, off-peak costs and peak costs. And for those who don't know, each of these except for your daily supply charge refers to a set time of day where you will be charged for your usage based on their set rates. Taken straight from the CanStar website, off-peak electricity times are those when the grid is experiencing less demand for power. Off-peak times are generally those throughout the later evening and early morning on weekdays. The middle of the day and weekends are typically considered to be shoulder periods and peak periods are generally in the morning when people are getting ready for work and at night time once people get home from work. For South Australia, which is where I personally live, just to give the example, peak usage times are from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. every single day. Shoulder usage times are from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day and off-peak usage times are from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. every single day. Just be aware that peak, shoulder and off-peak electricity usage times vary depending on the energy retailers themselves 
and the state that you might live in, but overall they are pretty similar and all of this information should be available on each energy retailer's website. Let's move on from electricity for a moment and talk about gas. For gas, all you really need to write down is your daily supply charge as well as your rates based on usage. Every provider will offer different rates based on your usage amount and generally speaking, the more natural gas you use, the cheaper it will become. As you can see in my table here, after doing some research, I came across six different charge types depending on my usage. So once you have the details of your current situation written down, it's now time to start looking at the competition to compare what you're currently paying to what you potentially could be saving. My suggestion is to look at a minimum of five different providers and consider all of the packages they offer. I did this by going to each of the provider's websites listed in my example spreadsheet here. I looked for their energy plans, typed in my postcode and then looked for the rates they charge, then I inputted them into the spreadsheet. Just note that they won't align exactly to my example because I did this a little while ago and the prices have probably been adjusted since then. The point is to check them and then once you have them written down, you want to do some quick maths. In my example for electricity, I'm doing the cost on a 90 day billing cycle. So for electricity, I multiplied the supply charge by 90 days. Then I multiplied my parents' estimated electricity usage by the percentage breakup that I believe they use. So as you can see, I've multiplied 727 kilowatt hours, which is their average monthly usage by the peak charge to start. And I estimated that they were using electricity about 72% of the time that peak charges fall into each day. I then did the same for the other two charge types, which I estimated 13% of the time they would fall into the off-peak usage and 15% of the time into the shoulder period. Then finally, in the cell below that total, I applied any discounts that are applicable as part of that set plan. For gas, I did the exact same where I worked out the cost based on my parents' monthly usage and got the totals, which are in various colors once discounts have been applied. The colors have a conditional format applied to them, which shows the best providers to go with. Pretty simple. Green is good. Red is bad. And when comparing all of the deals, it worked out that my parents should be changing their plan to be with the same energy provider, but the value saver compared to what they were currently on. Most of the deals available were comparable. However, there were some providers who were significantly more expensive, which was the purpose of today's video to identify if who my parents were with was the cheapest or at least competitive. Now, there are a few extra considerations to take into account as well. One of them being to make sure you check if there are any connection fees, disconnection fees, or meter read fees for call outs to come and do that work. I personally would highly recommend if you're going to be signing up to a new plan, asking the company that is going to do that work and charge you that fee if they can waive it. This truly could save you up to a few hundred dollars depending on how expensive those fees are. And all it really takes is a bit of conversation as part of you signing up to a new deal. And once you have decided on a new energy provider or found that the current provider you're with is going to be the one you're staying with, again, I would highly recommend calling them and asking them if this is the best deal they can offer or if there are any discounts which could be applied to persuade you into going with them. This is something that I have done my whole life. And just as one example, I recently renewed my gym membership and they gave me an extra month for free purely because I said I was thinking about quitting. Saved myself 40 bucks which isn't that much, but when you do it to everything, it really does add up. And lastly, the final thing that I would be taking into consideration is the types of deals available from these providers. If there are two providers that you're umming and ahhing about, and one of them has a special promotion, let's just use frequent flyer points, for example. I like to travel, I like to fly, and flying free is really good. It's something that I definitely would consider signing up for if the price range wasn't too different. If I had to pay a tiny bit more, but the deal in points was well worth it because it meant I could fly for free to my next travel destination, or it would definitely take a hit off of the cost that it's going to cost me. Again, this is something that is well worth capitalizing on. And there are lots of different plans which offer lots of different bonuses attached to them. So definitely consider all of the factors, not just the cost that you're coming out from when you do your calculations. Sometimes it really can be worth signing up for the deal. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about finding a better energy provider 
if you are someone who needs to actually do that check and do a shop around. So hopefully what I've shown you today is a pretty summarized overview of how to tackle that task. And hopefully today's video was helpful. If it was, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. I really appreciate the support. It goes a long way for the channel and it definitely does not go unnoticed. And with that being said, I will leave you there. Have a good day, have a good week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.